You can definitely avoid it if you're careful. I, on the other hand, am not that careful. There it goes, breaking off. And I cracked it. What is up guys, welcome back to the Taco Rig channel. If you saw from the thumbnail, we're gonna be working on a very, very, very dope project for the 2020 Tacoma. So I hit up my friends at uh, Dio Dynamics. Dio Dynamics, Dio Dynamics. Because I saw on their website that they have a sick set of daylight runner replacements that turn them into RGB. And that is what I have right here in front of me as well as some angel eye halos to put on the Tacoma headlights. So this is a combination project because one, the Tacoma headlights right now have a bunch of chrome. So first thing we're gonna tackle is blacking out that chrome, but we're also gonna be working on putting in angel eye halos that I got right here from Dio Dynamics. I gotta figure out how this all wires up, but those as well as RGB um, daylight runners. So these are basically the daylight runner replacement boards and we're gonna be using these to replace the RGB. I got a lot of wiring right here. There's the RGB control box that apparently works with your phone. I got a lot of stuff to basically figure out as well as some uh, butyl replacement. So this is how you basically reseal the headlights. But yeah, I got a lot of stuff right here and I really gotta basically sit down and figure out how all this works but I'll have some spare time because the first thing we need to do is go remove the headlights off the Tacoma and open them up. So that is a lengthy process. Um, let's go ahead, let's go downstairs, let's jump into it and let's remove the headlights. All right, so first steps in getting to the headlights to take them off, we gotta take the grill off. So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and a flat nose screwdriver to remove the clips and the two bolts holding on the grill. If you remember from the Toyota Pro Grill install that we did, it's pretty simple. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here, and then there's a total of six clips. One clip right here, one clip right here, and then there's four clips along the bottom right here. So there's one here, one there, and then one here and one there. So remove those, and you can take the whole grill assembly off. You also need to disconnect this uh, factory sensor right here for the Toyota sensor down here, but there's a sensor right here and it's held on with a clip right here. So you gotta remove that clip, unplug the sensor, and then you're good to go. Okay, so the grill is off very simply. Other thing, this is my first time trying to figure out how to take the headlights off, like actually take them out. So I'm not entirely sure if all I have to do is remove this bolt here and this bolt here. I'm hoping so. Otherwise, we gotta start basically taking apart the whole entire front end, which I'm comfortable doing. I just hope that those are the only two bolts. I'll find out. So I'm gonna take those off. Those look like a 12 millimeter. Let me check. Correction, they are a 10 millimeter. So two 10 millimeter bolts up here and we'll see if it actually will come out. All right, well, um, basically I cut away because I had to figure out how to take this off and I figured it out. So I'm gonna show you guys how you actually do it on this side, but as you can see, a lot had to come out and a lot had to be taken apart to be able to actually take the headlight out, which is kind of annoying, but at least I didn't actually have to take this fully off. So just parse it off. So let's go through all of the nuts and bolts that you need to take off in what order. So first step over here, and you don't necessarily have to do it, but it's gonna make your life easier and you're not gonna break as many clips, but taking this little plastic guard off, I already did on this side, but all that's holding it is one plastic clip and that is right there. So take that plastic clip out and this will come out easily. All right, so with that out, let's move on to some more bolts and nuts you need to take out. First off, you need to take this little plastic clip out right here. So pop that out. I can actually do it by hand. Pop that out real quick and set it aside. Coming down around the side here, we need to start disassembling some stuff under our fender well here. So first off, we need to take this bolt out right here inside of our fender well. If we come down a little bit further, you need to loosen this so that we can pry this out as well. And then on the other side, you need to take this bolt out and you need to take that bolt out right there. So take those three bolts out and then you just loosen this one right here because all it is is just kind of like a clamp. So you just gotta give that a couple turns and then that'll allow you to pop out, in my case, the gray outer liner. Take those bolts out and I'll show you how you pry it next. Oh, I forgot to mention, they're all 10 millimeter. First steps in prying off this stuff so that we can access, there's actually a bolt right here we need to access to take the headlight out. Um, very annoying that it's right here, but basically we gotta pry this fender well out enough so that we can get to that bolt. So first thing you need to take is your fender flare and you need to basically pull this off. And the best way to do it is actually from the inside because there's just clips that hold this in. So instead of just prying on this and breaking those clips, you can actually reach inside. That's why we pulled out that initial cover 
so we can reach inside and we can pull those clips. We can pinch them and pull them off. So let me show you those clips and then I will show you basically how I'm doing it. All right, so looking inside right here, we're looking inside from the headlight right now. You see these little clips that are protruding right here, here, and there? Those are the clips for that outer fender liner. So what you wanna do is you wanna pinch these so that you can push them through to the other side without damaging those clips. So basically just pinch them, push them through, and it'll be it'll allow you to basically pull that that liner or that fender flare out. So what I'm doing right here is I'm reaching on the inside and you guys can see right here as I do this, I'll be able to pull this out. So you can see that basically I was able to reach inside. There's three clips, you push them and you're able to then push this fender liner out. And that is all the further you need to go is just get those loose so that you're ready to go. Now you remember that clip on the inside here, that little straight screwdriver uh, screw that we did? Basically you want to now kind of pull down on our fender here, on the bottom, pull it off those screws, and then you should be able to pull this apart right here. I think I need to loosen my screw just a little bit more. You don't have to actually unscrew it though. You can if you want to. There we go. I was able to separate that. Now, this joint right here is actually just like a, a vertical seam. So what you need to do is pull this way. And the best way I've actually found to do it is to reach on the inside just like we did for these clips and basically push on the actual um, outer fender here. Push on this plastic fender to push it out. So this is like a little clip here. And we need to pull it out from that clip. So again, best way to do it is reach inside and then kind of all you're doing really is just pushing out right here. So. Uh, push out on it and you guys can kind of see there and I'm gonna push out on the bottom part now there we go and we got it now you got some place to give some leverage one little bonus tip right there those bolts that we took out there's like a little socket that they kind of ride on um, and sometimes they get hung up around that socket so you kind of have to go down there and just pry the fender out a little bit from that side. Let me show you real quick. So I put it back to where it was to show you guys what I was doing. Here on the inside here, where you took this bolt out right here, sometimes it gets hung up on that socket right there. So what you need to do is basically pry up on the plastic to pry it off of that screw hole, like so. So that way it's not hung up on this little lip right here. Um, and then that allows you then to pull this down a lot more. All right, so with that pull back, we can see the bolt we need to remove. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then there are two 10 millimeter bolts on the top. And that is all that's left holding the headlight in. So once we remove those three bolts, we'll be able to move the headlight out. And we also want to unclip all of the lights on the backhand side, and then we can take the whole assembly out. All right, so that is how you remove both of your headlights. We're all set, ready to move upstairs to the next steps. One last tip though, before I leave the truck, um, I always like to go through and kind of put the bolts back in their holes. I mentioned this when I did the lift video, but putting the bolts back where they go, not actually screwed in, but just where they go. So that way, one, I know where they go, and two, I don't lose them. So that's just one little bonus tip. Let's head upstairs. All right, so with the headlights upstairs, this is kind of the point where um, I'm attempting something that I've never done before, which is basically taking this headlight assembly apart, separating this outside lens from the housing. So what I'm pretty much gonna do is I'm gonna put one of these in the oven, um, and then I'm gonna go through the whole process, and then I will basically, on the second one, show you how to do it based on what I learned from doing that the first time. So in the meantime, I'm gonna throw one of these in the oven, and then on the other headlight, I'm gonna explain to you what all we're gonna be doing in terms of what I'm gonna be blacking out, what I'm gonna be changing, all that sort of stuff. So right now, I'm gonna put one of these in the oven. Alexa set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. All right, so while the driver headlight is in the oven, I'll explain all that when we get to the how to open this when we do this one. But let me explain to you what I'm going to be doing in terms of this headlight. So first off, once we get this apart, we're gonna be basically taking this all apart and we're gonna paint all of the chrome on the inside so this chrome piece basically comes out. I'm gonna take it downstairs, I'm gonna spray paint it black. That's part of what we're gonna be doing. The next part is where the diode dynamics comes in. First off, we're gonna be installing angel eyes, like I said in the thing. We're gonna put angel eyes around projector lamps. That's gonna be dope. The next thing is this daylight runner right here. There is an LED board on the inside and diode dynamics has made a replacement, basically, LED board, this one uh, right here, for that 
that is RGB controlled. So the cool part about this is it's RGB controlled and right here is the controller and uh, this will allow you to use your phone to change this into any color you want. So red, green, blue, purple, pink. I think there's like patterns and stuff you can make it do, uh, sequences, all kinds of cool stuff that you can't do with the, the standard white one. That is what we're gonna be doing for this light. So now I'm gonna be waiting on that headlight to get finished. I'm gonna basically pry it apart and then then I will show you guys how we do that on the second one. But first off, I'm basically going to worry about getting this one done, figure out how to do everything, make sure I know how to do it, and then I will show you guys how to do it as well. All right, I got this apart. Let me tell you right now, um, it wasn't easy, but what I figured out was uh, the more heat the better. Um, so I'm going to try the second one now, and I'm going to explain to you guys how to do the second one, and uh, I might tell you a different amount of time later on here. Um, but I tried varying heats, varying amounts of time, and eventually I got it to work, but it basically it took a lot of time in the oven. Uh, versus the first couple times I attempted it. Let me show you how you prep it to put it in the oven And then I'll tell you how long we're gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna see if it works better the second time around All right, so to start oven needs to be preheated to about 280 290 degrees. That's where I got mine a lot of people will say to use a cookie sheet don't use a cookie sheet use wooden blocks so um, inside of here, I got some two by four blocks. They just chill in there. Don't worry, they're perfectly fine. They're not gonna like catch on fire or anything. Um, but let your oven preheat and let that all get set and ready to go. In the meantime, you need to prep your light. So on the light, the first thing, um, and this is differing opinions, but I like to take all the light bulbs out. I do not like having the light bulbs actually in the light itself. So take all of your light bulbs out. Take all of them. And then with the daylight runner, there's just this cable right here that you can't take out. So I kind of just clipped it in here. So that way it's ready to go. And now that you got all of the lights out, you need to remove all of the screws. So there are a total of five screws to take out. One here, one there, one there, one there, and one down there. So take all five screws out and you are now ready to go for putting it in the oven. All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven for 20 minutes. Yes, 20 minutes. A lot of people online literally like pry like crazy to take these things open. They use heat guns and stuff. Um, what I'm trying to show you is the proper way that I've learned from like dealer installations of where they've actually like, they do this like for a living. And most of them, they just leave it in the oven for a long time and then they're able to just open it up. So. That is what I was trying to do forever on the first light and I kind of finally got it right after I left the light in there for 18 minutes. So I'm gonna go 20 minutes on this one and hopefully it should just come right apart. So 20 minutes at 280, 90-ish degrees. Put it in there, um, place it on your wood blocks in a way that basically it's not touching anything. So as you guys can see right there, basically it is not touching any of the walls. The wood blocks are supporting it and it's good to go. So I'm gonna put that in there. And uh, Alexa set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. And now we wait. All right, it has been 20 minutes. So we are now gonna remove the um, headlight. And I wanted to point out, I have gloves on. These are nothing crazy. These are just like work gloves. Um, but they definitely help with preventing the heat from burning you because the light itself you cannot touch with bare hands But these gloves work really well um, and these are also harbor freight gloves So I'm going to take the light out very carefully. It is hot and I can tell that just by holding it It is it does get through your gloves. So you got to kind of move and work around it All right, so uh, where I like to start is actually in this corner right here. So this upper corner of the light is where I like to start and basically I'm going to pry it apart. Oh, and this is working really well, just like I planned. So it does take a little bit of force and a little bit of persuasion. Don't forget about the clips that are there too. You also don't want to get caught on the clip. But basically I'm trying to pull it apart. This does take a little bit of force. And I will point out, this is hot. It's kind of bumping up against me and stuff. Woo. Hot, hot. 
Once you get moving with it though, it starts moving and gets a lot easier. And this is where it gets a lot easier. There we go, got the release. Basically you just gotta pry, put a little bit of force into it and just kind of let it slowly open up as you go. Because the last thing you wanna do is uh, break it. I'm down to just this corner. As you guys can kind of see, I have most of it opened up. Um, I'm not really sure how well you can see. You really wanna be careful in this corner because it likes to wanna break. Like I said, just kind of put some force into it and let it pull itself. There it goes, break it off. And I cracked it. This corner's very hard. I cracked the last one in this exact same, so you can definitely avoid it if you're careful. I, on the other hand, am not that careful. Just gotta pull it off this last little bit here, and we are separated. That worked a million times easier than the last time, and I didn't have to pry or use tools or anything, but I'll show you guys close up of what happened, but let's take it apart. So, as I was prying on it, and it is still pretty hot, um, this one came out nice and cleanly across the whole entire thing until this little corner right here. So as you can probably see right there, the corner cracked when I got to this part trying to pull it out and uh, I ended up cracking this corner right here. Not a huge deal when it comes to the overall scheme of things because we'll put enough butyl in there to make sure we seal it up properly. But just kind of a bummer that that ended up happening. Now we're gonna move on to disassembling the inner parts of the lens. One thing to keep in mind, try your best to not touch that front inside of the lens. You don't wanna smudge it, you don't wanna scratch it. Be mindful of that. So we're gonna start on basically disassembling this inner housing. And the first thing we need to do is remove our daylight runner board, which is this right here, held on by three screws. One here, one here, and one here. Do that and that'll come out and we'll move on. So with the daylight running board removed, we can now move on to removing everything else that's on the inside, and then we can take the lens and put it back on the light like I got there. It's just it's just sitting here, it's not actually attached. So to do that, we have four screws we need to remove. One down here, one up here, one over here, and one over here, right there. So you remove all four of those screws, and the assembly will now pop out of the lens and then we can start disassembling all the other stuff like I've done on the first light so that way we can go paint them. If you are not going to be painting them and you're not gonna be putting halos on, I don't know why you took your headlight apart, but um, you don't have to do it, but we're gonna disassemble the whole thing. All right, now we can pop this out. There are a few clips in a few areas that kind of hold it up. Um, you just basically gotta manipulate it and pop it out. And there we go. So now, like I said, we take the lens and uh, I like to go ahead and just set it back on top of this light. So that way, um, one, I don't put any smudges on it and two, it's just out of the way, out of sight, out of mind, good to go. This piece also just comes right off so we can set that off to the side for now. The next thing we're gonna be doing is basically removing all of the screws that are left. So there are one, two, two screws holding this little plastic piece in right here and then three more holding the daylight runner projector lamp thing in here. So we're gonna remove all five of those screws and take apart the rest of it. So in terms of things we're gonna be painting, we're not gonna be painting this, so you can set this off to the side. What we are gonna be painting is this, because it has a ton of ugly ass chrome that we don't want, and we're gonna be painting this, because it's clear, we can go ahead and paint that. It'll make it look a little more blacked out and the TRD Pro ones um, have that blacked out. So we're gonna black that out as well. On this right here, we need to take our reflector out. So to do that, there's three clips on the inside right here. So you just pop them. Um, it's kind of a little bit easier if you do these two first. So pop those two clips out, all three of them. This comes out right here. So we're gonna be painting this because it has chrome on it. We're gonna be painting these two pieces down here. On the reflector, what I'm gonna do is something that basically causes a smoked effect. So I'm not gonna paint the front of it. What I'm gonna do is put masking tape over the front and I'm gonna paint the back side. It's gonna give it like a smoked effect when we're done. So all those pieces are torn apart. We're gonna go down to the garage now and get everything prepped and ready to paint. What's up? So we got a little late yesterday. So this is uh, day two working on this project. I got everything down here in the garage, right down here on the table, ready to be painted. But first I'm going to go through and sand all these. Now I'm using a cry Nylon spray on paint that says that you don't need it to sand the surfaces no no sanding required This is just Krylon all-in-one black both uh, paint and primer But I'm gonna hit it with some 220 sandpaper just to rough up it a little bit so that it will adhere to the paint a lot better So go do that put the first coat of paint on and then move on
All right, so they are all sanded, and if you saw there, I wiped them down, and then I blew them off with some air to make sure all the dust is clear. But basically, you're just I just roughed up the surface. That way, the paint adheres better to it. So now, I'm just going to take the paint and start painting. Oh, I did want to point out, if you remember, I uh, said I was going to do like a black smoke look on these uh, reflectors that go on right here, right here on the sides. Well, this one goes over here. Or wait, that one right there. Um, so basically, I taped off. So basically, I taped off the front of it. And then I'm painting the backside, the textured part. So I'm going to paint the backside. It's going to give it like a smoked look. Um, so basically going to start spray painting everything. Okay, so that is the first coat for everything. I'm going to let that dry for the next hour or so and then come back hit again. And then eventually I will put the headlight back together. So in the meantime, while the paint was drying, I've been messing around. With wiring, figuring out all the wires, they do use vampire clips on everything, but I have everything figured out in terms of what I need to clip into and use, which is great. So um, basically I got everything figured out. Voltage meter helped a lot trying to figure out where some of these wires were, but I got the halo just chilling over here. Um, so I can show you guys that um, basically, let me turn on the lights real quick, that I have everything working the halo is on right there it's actually cool with this kit you get to tap into both the daylight runner and with the regular one so that way they're really bright during the day when your daylight runners are on and then at night it gets a little bit dimmer this is actually the night one so that's how bright it is. it's going to be at night and then it's even brighter for the daytime same thing here are the two led boards uh, the LED boards are actually controlled with the phone. So right here is the little diode dynamics box right here. So you download the diode dynamics app right here. And then you can go through and you can change the colors. I got some cool presets right now. I'll show you guys this at the end, but there's there's some really cool presets you can do. There's patterns you can do, all kinds of patterns. Right here's like a red fade. Here's a seven color sequence, so that changes colors. There's even sound active mode, so if you talk really loud or whatever, it picks up your voice and does sound out of, but cool stuff. Anyways, that's the wiring. I figured that out. I'll show you guys that when we get to that stage, but let's jump back and do another coat of paint. That is coat number two all wrapped up. And honestly speaking, I think that is going to be the last coat. The paint applied really well, and um, basically I'm going to let this dry now for a couple hours, and we'll come back and see. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave it like that. And uh, after two hours, basically, we it'll, it'll be dry to the touch, and we can start reassembling the fixture itself. All right, all the pieces have cured for two hours now, so we are ready to fully start the assembly process. And I gotta say, this paint turned out amazing. It's super smooth, like I can't ask for a better result. This was absolutely amazing. You guys remember these little side markers? I basically masked off the front of them and then painted the backside. That's kind of the result right there. So it gives it that smoked effect. And when the light comes through it, so like up here, it's got like a smoked effect to it, so that's pretty dope. All right, so the first step in the reassembly process is actually some modifications. So we need to take our halos and we need to install them right here on the surface. So what we first need to do is drill a hole for our wire right here. Now the hole needs to be big enough to slip this wire through, not necessarily this end piece right here. I'll show you real quick how you take this end piece off. You just need basically a little tiny screwdriver or in my case, I actually have a little pick. So let's take that off real quick, select our drill bit, and then we'll be drilling the hole. If you look at the end connector, what you're gonna wanna do is take a little pick or a little screwdriver and these two silver tabs right here, you're gonna wanna push down and in and pull back on the wire at the same time. So you push in on one, push in on the other, and you should be able to pull your wire out of the end connector. Be sure to keep track of which way those go in. So black's on the top, yellow's on the bottom. And now we can drill the hole for this size wire to slip through in our plastic piece. So the bit I chose, the 11 64ths bit right here, it is basically the width or the gauge of the wire so this is the hole that we're going to be needing to drill so i'm going to be drilling this hole on the top side so if you're looking at the surround this is like the daylight runner so this is the top this is the bottom i'm going to drill it on the top so that way when i put this in here we're going to epoxy it in place but that way the wire up here is also taking all the weight so even if the epoxy fails it's still going to be sitting right there all right so slight problem i noticed because of this design and because these are such big uh halos also these halos aren't designed these are universal halos so you can use them with any 
mini projector lamp. This butts up right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this cuts off uh, right here with the plastic. So my halo is not going to sit where I want it. I would like it to sit there, but because of this top piece, it's gonna sit offset, which uh, isn't a big deal. I think it'll be fine. But if you wanted to be a per perfectionist, you would probably cut that a little bit so that you can slide it up in. I really don't care. I think it's gonna look good either way, especially with the black, it's all gonna blend in. So I'm going to just kind of offset it so that it's down a little bit on the, when it's basically sitting here. So I'm gonna drill the hole up here in the corner. I'm gonna offset the halo so that it's basically hanging down a little bit on the bottom side. And that's basically what I'm gonna do. So let's drill the hole. All right, we now move on to reassembly. So first thing we need to do on that is to take our main assembly here and lay it flat down. There are a variety of pieces that we need to put into this. We, this is the passenger side. So we need the passenger pieces. So we have this little thing that goes over here and I'm just kind of laying it out so I can get an idea of where all this is gonna go um, and where it's gonna screw in. So that screws in right there. So we take our um, reflector here. This just clips right in to this. Try not to break our connectors. The back one needs to go in first. So push the back one in, then push the two front ones in. Clip into place, nice and clean, all black. This will go in right here, overlaps right there. And this piece kind of will be bolted in later so we can kind of set off to the side for now. We do need to put our daylight runner back in. So this lens falls into place right here with the assembly on top. All right, so first thing here in terms of screws that we need to put back in, two screws hold in our plastic piece right here. That's one up here and one down below. All right, and then three screws hold on our daylight runner assembly. Not necessarily the board, but the actual assembly portion. So screw in those three screws right now. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's one all the way in the upper top as well. All right, with all that in, now we can move on to putting this into our lens. So I have our lens here, and this whole assembly right here just drops down into place like so. Be very careful to not scratch anything in the process. That goes down there. This piece goes on the side over here. Okay, I take that back. This piece needs to go in first. All right, after a little bit of uh, figuring out, I think I got it now, figured out of which way this goes in. All right, that just kind of plopped down in there. All right, all right, we're in. We are good to go. So now we can screw this in with the last remaining screws that we need to put in. All right, that is everything on the light. Everything is bolted down. We're good to go, good to go. Um, so now we need to put our RGB board in. So this board right here will go right here. It goes in right here. There are three screws that go into it. We are all ready to go. Let's take a little look. Let's take a little look. What's it look like? Ooh. Excuse all the bugs on it and everything, but man, oh man, that is a transformation. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the other one. All right, so it is now time to basically reseal the headlight um, and basically wrap this up in terms of getting the headlights back together and then going and putting it all together on the truck So what we need to do is one get the oven preheating to 275 again Two, what we're gonna need to do is add more butyl around the seal So I'm following there's there's many methods of how you do this in terms of what I've read online and what I've seen I'm following Diodynamics actual video on how you do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the butyl we have here, so this is just black butyl, and it's a uh, stretchy too, so you can stretch it to make it thinner. And I'm gonna run it around this whole entire seal, this whole entire channel on this light right here to add more butyl. Then we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in the oven for 10 minutes. That's all we're gonna do, put it in the oven for 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes, and then when we take it out, we're gonna take our lamp here we're gonna one feed these wires through the hole that's down in there but we're gonna press this together and screw it all together oven just got preheated so let's go ahead let's put the butyl we'll run the strip of butyl around this and then we'll put it in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes all 
All right, camera battery died, but I got it on there. Basically, all I did was push it down, get all the clips to line up, then I flipped it over, and I went ahead and screwed in everything. Now it is completely assembled and basically done. Last things I gotta put back on this, this little plastic piece thing that goes in this little corner right here, and then I need to use the grommet. I already went ahead and basically uh, take this grommet, and put it around these wires right here. So in the meantime, while I'm working on that, I'm gonna throw the next one in the oven, get that ready to go for 15 more minutes, and then uh, we'll be uh, done, and we get to go install them in the truck. All right, here we go, round two. Round two of the lights. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding the halo cable behind this reflector lens, and then this one I'm just pushing through the front. And I'm pushing it through that same hole that the daylight runner went through in the first well, in the OEM light. All right, so now we start in the upper corner here, pushing this in. Number two, all sealed up, all done. It goes on like this. All right, so for this spot right here, I basically just cut the wires off on both sides of this grommet, and then I cut a slit in the side. So the slit, is what's gonna allow me to basically pass these wires through. So you gotta pass both of them. Hardest part is getting the connector through there. Again, we could just pop the connector out like we did for the halo um, to put it in the first place. I made the slit big enough that I can just push it through. Same thing with the big connector here. Push it through the slit and pull our wire through. Cool, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put all of the light bulbs back in. Our diode dynamics uh, low beams. That in there and our side marker and that is it we are ready to install these into the truck would you look at that Ooh, baby all right so we're in the garage and I wanted to quickly walk you guys through the wiring in terms of how this all comes together so you have what are known as drivers for both the halos and for our RGB LED daylight runners so here's the gist of what you need to know let's start with the halo so the halo comes out of the light with just this yellow and black cord that you've seen right here you connect that then to the driver right here so the cable comes from here and goes to the driver then the driver comes out and connects to this just the connection right here which goes to this split breakout right here now this split breakout right here is made up of four connectors spade connectors that are going to go onto our vampire clips so we're going to use our vampire clips is what i like to call them to clamp onto the factory wires that we need to tap power off of the four wires that we're going to be tapping power off off of are the yellow one is our turn signal power the white one is for like your headlights so it's basically your low power so basically at night when you're running just your headlights you don't need them to be super bright that's what the white ones for the red one is our high power that's for like our daylight runners so during the day they're nice and bright so you can see them on top of all the sunshine and then lastly the black wire is the ground wire coming over to the truck right here this is the connector that goes to the daylight runner on my Tacoma so this is what normally plugs into the daylight runner now I've already tapped one of the wires so far but we're gonna be actually tapping all three of them so the white one there actually has a black line that is going to be our ground the other two are the two different power signals that we're gonna need one of them is low power one of them is high power I'm not really sure yet which one is which but the good news is you can connect up to both of them and then basically if one of them if we have it backwards we can unplug them from our vampire clips and we can switch them so those are the three wires that we're gonna need to tap so I need to put two more vampire clips on that one now we're gonna get the turn signal power from this connection right here so the light gray connector you're gonna find a white and black wire that's our ground wire and then another wire on the passenger side it's blue on the driver's side it's like a purplish brown I'll show you it as well we're on the passenger side right now the colors for the power wires differ from the left to the right from the passenger to the driver's side but we're gonna be tapping into this blue one right here for our power for that ground to go to our halo so that's what you need to know for the halo portion for the RGB for the daylight runner though it's a little simpler so the wire comes out of the headlight right here for our daylight runner it plugs into the driver and then the driver has two wires that come out of it one of them is a tap for ground so we're gonna plug this into a ground wire tap that we're gonna grab the other wire goes and then it actually connects to the 
RGB controller box right here. So we're gonna mount this inside of the truck somewhere. But this RGB controller box actually has four different control outputs and they are right here. So there's these little plugs right here that you plug in. Uh, we're only gonna be using two because we only have two that we're controlling, but you could add two more later on if you have other RGB things from Dio Dynamics that you wanna control. But we're basically, this plugs into here. Now, the controller box needs to get power from somewhere and it basically just needs a power and a ground. Very simple. but. You can buy this nice little handy dandy cable right here that allows you to just plug this straight into the factory daylight runner harness and you are good to go. You actually don't have to plug this into anything. It kind of is just here as a spare, but we don't actually need this. All we need is this right here to plug into here which powers our thing. So that is all you guys need to know on the wiring. I'm going to get started on actually installing our lights into the vehicle. So I'm starting over here on the passenger side. It's the exact same process as when we took them out. Um, basically you got two bolts up here and you got one bolt on the side. So once we get those three bolts in, we can actually push this whole assembly back into place and we can move on from there. All right, one tip. Before you put these in, wow, that looks sweet. Make sure you do all the wiring first. I kind of just realized that after doing this, this was a bitch and a half to try and do the wiring on this side. Having this thing already in, especially reaching, there's like a plug on this side. I had to like reach up under in to get it. Leave the light out, do your wiring, then put the light up in. But the light's all up in. It's just the reverse process. Two bolts there, one clip in the center there. There's kind of like a clip that it clips into right there as well. Went ahead, put the panel back together. There's a bolt that was right behind there and then on the back side, put these two bolts back in, the bolt underneath and the other bolt underneath. So that is all wrapped up and put back together. I've already gone through and wired up everything. Like I said, we basically are tapping into all of these different things in the order that I said. Yellow wire goes to our turn signal thing here. I need to plug this actually in here in a second. And then this is our harness for our daylight runner. And we basically tapped in all the different wires that we're gonna need for both the halo and the ground that we needed for our RGB controller. So now I'm gonna tidy up all these wires on this side and basically button it all up. Well, actually, I'll probably wait. Correction, I'm gonna wait until I get the other side so that we can verify everything is working. Then I'll button up all the wires. All right, everything is all wired up. Time to turn it on. You guys can't even tell it's so bright. All right, so this is the best camera angle I've been able to get so far. Um, but if you can see there, basically the turn signals are on, so it's pulsating. And I can change the color with my app here of the Daylight Runner. We can go the pure white option, we can go blue, we can go red, we can go green. Or I could just mess around and make it any color in the world. And those halos are super bright when they're on full power. But there you guys go. We are fully working. Everything works perfectly fine. So there are the halos. As you guys can tell, I have to get pretty close because they are bright. And that is the lowest setting for those halos. These RGBs are dope though. I can change the color to whatever I want. There's even some custom patterns in here too. You can even make them strobe. So if I want to do a cyan strobe, I can do strobing lights. How crazy is that? There's a white, green, red, white, and blue, baby. I'm all prepared for 4th of July now. Check that out, that is sick. All right guys, well I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up all that wiring because it is a mess right now. And I'll be back in a bit. All right, so thanks to some handy dandy zip ties, I also gotta get some, uh, there's some double-sided tape that came with this to mount this. So I'm gonna mount the controller box up here in the fender well. And then thanks to some zip ties, I basically have cleaned up all of the wiring mess on both sides, there is one wire right here actually that connects basically the two RGBs. So this comes from the controller and runs over to this one. So I'm gonna put the grill in now and then figure out where that wire is gonna go. I'm basically trying to run it up along this this A rail here. But everything's in, everything is working. Basically gotta go get the grill, put the grill in, and I'm done. Just look at that, just look at that is mean. So like I mentioned, right here on the phone, I have the Diode Dynamics app, and I can change the color of those to whatever one. Right now it's pure white, make them blue, make them red, make them green, or we can go to the patterns, and we can basically make them do whatever we want. This one's kinda cool. 
is like a flash jump of all the colors. That one's kind of cool. That's like a fade of colors. Get you guys a little side angle here, right here. You can you can kind of make out the colors. It looks a lot better in person, but it is super bright, and this camera is struggling to pick it up, to say the least. But that's it. I will wrap up this video in the morning to show you what it looks like during the day, but uh, I'm going to back this out and see what it looks like outside, because that looks sick. All right, it's the next morning and this is the finished product during the day. So I got the RGBs on red right now. But man, does that look sick. Woo. Mean and aggressive, I like it. Big shout out to Diode Dynamics for hooking me up with the halos and with the RGBs. This thing is dope. I'll link them down in the description down below, all the stuff you guys need to see. But anyways guys, Taco Rick out. See you in the next one, peace.